everyone. Welcome to RPK. We are so excited you're joining us online today because if you weren't, we'd just be standing here chatting to a camera. And that would be weird. <laughs> so we appreciate it. <laughs> what about you, Jeff? You thankful for anything today? Absolutely. I am thankful for a whole lot of things every single day. Um, the list is pretty long. Yeah, I know. And you know, it's really important to think about the things that we're thankful for, but it's also important to show people gratitude, right? Yes. You've got to let people know they're doing an amazing job. And gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. So for example, if someone helps you out, you want to let them know you're thankful. Or if someone is super kind, you can let them know you saw their kindness. Or if someone says, hey, watch out for that quicksand, <laughs> you might want to say, thanks. Am I right? Absolutely. Now, Jesse, some of us have seen this megaphone all month long, but I think there may be some friends out there who still don't know what it's all about. Why are you talking into this megaphone anyway? Well, that's easy. It's because our theme this month is shout it out. Let them know you're thankful. As you can see, we've also been writing things down that we're grateful for all month long and putting them on these little megaphones to remind us to say thank you. And you guys can do that too. You have your own little megaphones that you can write what you're thankful for. And if you don't have this, you can just put it on a post-it or even a small piece of paper. That's awesome. We really need to make sure people know who we are thankful for and what they do for us. And you know how else we need to let know that, let know that we are thankful? God. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's really important that we spend time in prayer every single day to tell God how grateful we are for him. You know, I am so grateful for the Bible and the incredible things we can learn from it. And I'm especially thankful for Jesus and his amazing ability to relate to others through stories. You know, we're storytellers too, and I admire the way that he used things that people knew and understood to teach them about the Father's kingdom. Now, the term may seem a little tough for us to understand, but basically it's what things are like in heaven where God reigns as king. Uh, God wants to make this world more like his kingdom, uh, the kingdom of heaven. Talking about the kingdom of heaven is a way for us to know the things that are important to God. Yeah, that sounds like a story we need to hear. So let's watch this and then worship him together. Everybody, I'm Lawson and I'm incredibly grateful that my mom made two pumpkin pies because I don't think I can just stop with one. You can stop with one. The other one is for dinner tomorrow. Oh. Well, thanks for those words of wisdom, Mom. Even though my stomach is now sad. Be right back. Anyway, I'm practicing gratitude, especially after an amazing story I heard from this girl, Ashanti, who's a friend of my cousin, Layla. Now, Ashanti and her older sister, Kendra, are going to drive way north of the city and hike on this incredible trail that Kendra discovered. And Ashanti knows it's gonna be the best day ever. But just as they're packing up to go, it starts to rain a lot for like 40 days and 40 nights. And Ashanti's like, no! The whole day is already messed up. But then, Ashanti sneezes three times in a row. So loudly, the walls shake. Now, they can't go hiking, plus Ashanti's getting sick. Kendra tries to cheer her up and says, hey, we can still make s'mores. And it's all going great until kablam! Ashanti tries to check it out. She gets hit with a puff of burnt marshmallow fluff. Ashanti is completely done with this day. She stares out the window, wondering how soon she can just go to bed. But then, Ashanti starts to notice something. The rain on the window looks really cool. She says, wow. It's like stained glass. Then Oreo, who's really Kendra's cat, comes up and curls up with Ashanti and purrs, like a lion. And Kendra offers to teach Ashanti how to play chess, which Ashanti's been begging her to do for like three years. And pretty soon, Ashanti realizes that even though her day's not going to plan, she can still say, hey, thanks. 
because she's got a lot to be grateful for. So kids, never hike over Niagara Falls without a barrel. But do always remember that gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. Let's go! Uh-oh. Tissues on the counter, throw drops in the cabinet. Thanks, Mom. I'll see you guys next time. Let's go! PK, it's great to see you on Thanksgiving week. I mean, it's coming up in just a few days. Can you believe that? Okay, our bottom line today is adjust your attitude. Hmm. Who out there needs an attitude adjustment? I know sometimes we wake up, we're feeling kind of blue, a little sad, you know, we don't know what to do. But you know what? God's always with us. He's always here, ready to listen to what we have to say and to lift us up. So let's sing this one, no matter what I'm facing. Come on. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue. A little sad, but I know just what to do. Oh, oh, oh. you guys. Is your attitude adjusted now? Do you feel a little bit better? I know I do. How about you girls? Yeah? Awesome. Okay. Our basic truth today is I need to make the wise choice. And here's something wise that we can do every day. That is we can put our hope in Him and in Him alone. He is the only one that can handle all of that. And He's ready and He's waiting for us to trust in Him. So let's sing this song. We sang it at VBS this year. It's called In You Alone. Let's sing it together. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hand. You give me faith and I will put my again. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hand. You give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone. In you alone. I will put my hope in you, Lord. You My hope is in you alone, in you alone. Sing I 
like things aren't going the way they're supposed to go. You are reigning. You are in charge. And today, God, we say, we, we declare that our hope is in you alone. Our hope is not in anything of this earth, but only in you. And God, sometimes we start to turn a little to the left or to the right, but would you just keep us focused straight ahead on you. Keep us, just remind us every day who you are. We can trust you no matter what. That is such a great truth for us to hang on to. And we just hang on to that today. And as we move towards this day of Thanksgiving this week, we say thank you mostly to you. Thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you that you love us no matter what. Thank you that we can put our hope and our trust in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. I can take shout outs to a whole new level. <gasps> hey, person on the side of the street, thanks for picking up that piece of candy wrapper. Ooh, person in the purple shirt and those green shoes. You are awesome. Thanks. Hey, birds, thanks for those positive tweets. <gasps> yep, this is probably the best gift I've ever gotten. I will cherish it forever. What? The Megaphone 4000 just came out today with 27 built-in voice modules and Bluetooth capabilities! <gasps> That's way better than this old thing. Thanks a lot, person who bought me this lame Megaphone probably got it on sale. In today's Bible story, we'll hear about some people who weren't happy with what they were given and had a real bad attitude about it. That should be fun, right? Sure. Whatever. See you in a bit! Move along, people! The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God 
and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 15. While Jesus taught in many different ways, he often shared the most important truths as stories. He used the things and animals and situations in people's everyday lives to help them understand things that were bigger. One day Jesus explained to his closest friends what the kingdom of heaven was like, and he used a story to help it connect. Now, if he told that story to us today in our world right now, I think it would go a little something like this. There once was a man who owned a large vineyard. Here at Grape Escape Vineyards, we specialize in red, white, and green grapes. One bright autumn day, the man called in his manager to find out how his harvest was doing. It's doing grape. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. We shall pick the grapes immediately before the beetles nibble them up. That's some good raisin in. The next morning, the vineyard owner rose while it was still dark and hurried to the center of town. He arrived at around 6 a.m. and there were people still standing around noshing on grape jelly muffins. Are you looking for work? Yes, indeed. How much do you pay? One hundred dollars for the day. Precisely perfect. Let us proceed. The owner led the workers back to his vineyard. Baskets, hats, uh, don't squash the grapes. Oh, well, what happens if we do that? They might whine a little. The vineyard owner wanted to be sure that the beetles wouldn't ruin his precious grape harvest, so around three hours later at nine o'clock, he returned to the town center and found more people lined up for work. You come pick grapes for me. I'll pay you well. Good deal. Let's go. The workers were all picking as fast as they could, but there were still long rows to harvest, so the vineyard owner went back to the town center at 12 o'clock noon, three hours later, and there were still plenty of workers standing around. Come, help out in my vineyard. And after the new set of workers had worked for three hours, the vineyard owner returned to the town square again at three o'clock. Need some more grape pickers, you in? The blazing sun beat down as the vineyard owner added the new workers to his crew. One of them had hired at dawn, wiped sweat off his face as he sipped his water. Showing up for work in the afternoon. What a terrible work ethic. <sighs> The first workers returned to picking grapes, filling basket after basket. But even though it was still five o'clock, the vineyard owner returned to the town square where he still found plenty of people hanging around counting cockroaches and looking bored. Why have you been standing here all day? No one like hired us. I'll hire you, come work in my vineyard. For the final hour of the workday, everybody pitched in. Whew. As the last baskets of grapes were brought up, the owner called to his manager. Just look at all these beautiful grapes, all freshly harvested. A great job, if I do say so. Pay the workers. Start with the ones I hired last of all. So the manager pulled out his cash box and lined up the workers. He started with the ones who only picked grapes for an hour. Here you go, $100. Like totally rad, man. At the other end of the line, the workers who began at dawn began doing some quick math. A hundred dollars for one hour of work. Huh. That means we're about to get over a thousand dollars. The manager continued to hand out pay packets to the workers who started at three o'clock. One hundred dollars. And noon. One hundred dollars and nine o'clock in the morning. $100. Huh. Okay. By the time the workers who started at 6 a.m. reached the front of the line, they were getting a little bit um, worried. You're paying us what's fair for working all day, right? Yep. $100. What? Preposterous. The early morning workers stalked off to find the vineyard owner. You pay those hooligans who only worked an hour the same as us, even though we sweated all day picking your grapes. Just look at this crispy sunburn. Fred, didn't you agree to $100 for the whole day? That is a technicality. Do you feel cheated because I gave so freely to the other workers? 
Don't I have a right to do what I want with my own money? But it's not fair. Take your money and go. I want to give the ones I hired last the same pay I gave you. The early workers glared and skulked away, cash in hand. They had let the owner's generosity to someone else ruin their day. Jesus' story made it clear. God gives freely to everyone. Rather than focusing on what you don't have, adjust your attitude. Choose to look at what you do have. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Sometimes I can be ungrateful. It's true. Like with this whole megaphone thing, I think I deserve the best. I'm fun, I'm talented, I'm generous to other people most of the time. I should get the best gifts. It doesn't seem fair that someone else out there will get a better gift than me. No. Oh. You see, I forget to be grateful, but Here's another little secret. Sometimes you can be ungrateful too. Sometimes we forget to focus on what we've been given because we're too focused on what other people have. We're too focused on what we think is fair. Don't believe me? Ask yourself these questions. Am I jealous when someone has more or better stuff than me? Or do I think I deserve better than other people because I am better than other people? Or do I count my presents at Christmas to make sure I have more than anyone else? If you would say yes to any of those questions, you might need a little gratitude adjustment. All you have to do when you're feeling ungrateful is to take a second and look around at all the things you have to be grateful for. So maybe I don't have 27 voice modules and Bluetooth capabilities, but I do have two voice modules. It's important to be grateful. It's easy if you try. I've got the cool siren. <laughs> <Hi. Hi. laughs> Sorry, things aren't always fair, but sometimes that's a good thing. Because guess what? Jesus died for our sins. That wasn't fair. And we didn't do anything to deserve that kind of sacrifice. But Jesus did it anyway to show how much he loved all people. So here's the one thing to remember today. Adjust your attitude. Be grateful for what you've got. Don't worry about the stuff you haven't got. That's a lesson for me too. Oh, sorry. That's, oh, oh sorry. Sorry, okay. Oh. See you next time. <laughs>
God, this is a hard thing to get, even for us adults. We compare ourselves to other people. We get caught up in what we think should be fair. Please help us adjust our attitude and see your blessings for what they really are, blessings from you. You are generous to everyone. You are so good to us, God, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Friends, it was great hanging out with you today. And as you celebrate Thanksgiving this week, remember to keep letting others know how grateful you are. And we'll see you soon.